Good morning, good morning. This is Reverend Melcina Yancey White with Yancey Family Ministries. So glad to be with you another blessed Saturday morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Ah, we have a made up mind, but we will intentionally give God the glory. Amen. I want to start my good morning shout outs, always starting with my loving husband, Reverend Johnny M. White, Sr., pastor of Olive Grove Missionary Baptist Church, and good morning to our church family. I want to say good morning to my monthly subscribers. God bless you for continuing to plant a seed monthly. I appreciate you so much. And also to my honorary sponsors, Brother Larry Downey and his lovely wife, Linda. I'm excited. Y'all know me. I'm always excited when the Lord wakes me up and gives me another opportunity to serve him. Amen. I am continuing part two of my conversation with Deaconess Gwen Faulkner, my sister, and Pastor Willie Yancey, my brother. There was so much more we talked about. I couldn't get it all in one program, so I divided it. So again, this is part two. And you can't, you don't know this, but my sister Lily was sitting there as well, trying to be quiet just to let Gwen and Willie do the talking but she was just chiming in quietly it was so funny y'all it was so funny so i want to just continue again that conversation again you can ready to learn a lot more about yancey family history so sit down relax and enjoy this history Okay, as a part of Black History, my sisters want to tell me how I got started in music ministry with the Yancey family. So this is going to be very interesting to me, and I'm happy that they're willing and ready, more than ready, to share that information. Please tell me how I got started. Well, it was like this. Your sister, Lily, realized how you could sing. And so during the day, she would take you and put you in a little seat and say, Mel, I need you to sing this song. And she and you would get tired, but she said, no, you got to get that high note before you stop singing. She worked you and worked you until finally you would hit the high note, then she'll leave you alone. That happened quite often during your days of learning to sing. And then how did that transpire into us becoming a group? Well, Mama going to make sure you're going to sing as a group. Yes, she started you all singing. As a group. Okay, so who song, led most of the songs as the Yancey, Little Yancey family? It'll be you, then she got Detroit, and Joe never really sung. He ended up being on the drums. Tell me a little bit about what it was like when you were the first of the early group coming behind the original Yancey. What it was like being in services and seeing your older siblings up there singing before? Well, it was amazing. I think we was more enjoying that part of it to make us want to sing more and more and do better because they would sing a song and the whole audience at the end of the song would just stand up and clap and clap and they, and they call them back up to do the song again. They wanted a repeat of the song. It was just a blessing to see that kind of reaction that people had with the singing that were being go- that was going on. And so I always enjoyed that to the point that I wanted us to do the same thing. And so as we rehearsed, we learned to do the same thing. And many times the same thing happened to us. We would get a standing ovation and people want the song song again. So that was just a blessing from the Lord. Mm-hmm. But we, I do want to point out the humility of my parents. Mm-hmm. They was humble enough to know that was God goodness. Mm-hmm. We never could get a big head over it. Nope. We had to do the same thing again, harmonize again. Yeah. No jumping up thinking you done done something. Yeah. That was God goodness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they emphasized that with yes. you all. Yeah. Um, um, Pastor Yancey, one of the songs that I think that people love to hear, um, especially in this area in Oxford, North Carolina and surrounding areas, is the song you, you wrote years ago about the old house y'all grew up in and that your daddy didn't make much money and you all was living in. And what some people would listen to it and describe as poverty, but you talked about that old house and I just see people always relating to that. Can you talk about writing that song and why you wrote that song and why you recorded it? Well, we recorded that song because I wanted to share in that particular song how far the Lord has brought us from. Because I remember that old house we used to live in. I, I was maybe about five or six, seven years old at that time. But I, I remember that old house and how that house looked. And it had two parts to it. It had one part where mama had to go out of 
and go into the kitchen. Then I had the other part where we were sleeping. Then we had to sleep upstairs. That's where we sleep in. And upstairs, the old chimney looked like we're going to leave, looked like it's going to fall in at any time. But we were living that, that, in that particular house. And so I wanted to share that with my audience as how far God has brought us as it relates to our modern time. Because back then, people used to live back off the road or uh, down a long old path. And nowadays, people live on the side of the road and nice home. And so I wanted to, to share that song with my audience to, to just to come back to, to all of us that God has brought us from a mighty long ways. Because I think people have got so comfortable in with all this nice stuff. And we like to act like that we've been like this all the time. But we need to reflect sometime on where God has brought us from. And I remember being in some of the services, seeing the people respond to the details in, oh. in, in the story about the yeah. window yeah. and um, yeah. the cold weather out yeah. and how much daddy made an hour. That still blows my mind yeah. how God was providing for us. Daddy didn't make much money. He had a house full of kids and how God provided. But you also, you know, you talk about it because you know there's plenty of people that can relate. Yeah, sure, sure. Back then, uh, that everyone was... Sort of in no better shape than the other one. All of us was on farm and tended to background and so forth. And, and so I wanted to share that song. And, and, and when I sing the song now, I sort of add, add a lot to it yeah. because I wanted the people to understand, you know, we haven't gotten so cute and so right. up in there now. We don't bother to praise right. God. And, I, and then I go on talk about how mom used to get up early in the morning. She'd be cooking. She'd call us all up to breakfast and we'd get in. i get that molasses. I used to love molasses back then. We had, I had that cow butter. I used to love to put that homemade cow butter over that last and take that plate and sit it on the stove, let them mix it all up together. Mama cooked them whole cake, and I take the whole cake and sit there, sop that last with the bread in my hand, and drink that cow milk, man, that buttermilk, man. And that that's that's how I grew up being big and strong, eating that kind of food, you know. And so I just I just want to share that in that particular song, and I think a lot of people can relate to that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's clear in every service yeah. <laughs> that people can relate to that and, yeah. and they appreciate hearing about it. Yeah. And I don't, it's not degrading. We're no. glorifying how good God has been because right. even then he was providing all the time. And, and even now we see that he's providing in a different way yeah. and not to, not to judge anybody way in which God is providing for them, right. but God is a provider. Yeah, provider. And, and I always appreciate hearing yeah. about that because I was not in that house. Yeah. I wasn't born in that house. Yeah. Who was, who was all living at that house at that time? Gwen, do you remember? It was the um, Susan, Mary, Willie, Willa, myself, Lily, and Gloretta. Yeah. Oh, wow. So Larry, Joseph, myself, and Detroit wasn't in the picture yet. No. Okay. But I'm glad we got to talk about that because um, I still love the story. I still love the song. And that song is on one of the albums. Yeah. And it became popular when you published, you know, when the album was recorded and released. And I'm trying my best to get my hands on a copy of that. Um, but I'm going to keep trying. But, um, but thank you again for sharing, um, how that came to be and, and, and for sharing the story with the community. Um, but thank you all so much. I appreciate your time today. Um, this is Rich. I pray that um, all the kids and the grandkids get to hear some of this rich history and that they were born into. Um, but thank you all so much for being here. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank God good. Church. Thank God is so good. so good to me when I think about when I was at the age of six years old we used to live in a house that used to sit way back home in the woods you should have seen that old house that we used to live in the upper stair went up had cardboard in it Lord have mercy oh, yeah. that what we used to keep the rain and the wind and the cold weather out yeah. oh 
hook. You should have seen that old chimney that was in that house. It look as though it was going to cave in at any time. It wasn't up for four of us in the family then. And my father had a job working at the sawmill. Wasn't making but 60 cents an hour. Church ain't God good. Such a little that God I blessed us with. You know what? We were thankful. We didn't have the fine food to eat. We were thankful. Our mother used to sit out and make our clothes go on our back. Tell the world everywhere I go, God is good. So, so, so good. Every time I look back over my life, when I was sick, He brought us from nobody but Jesus. Almighty Lord. Oh, 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 nobody but Jesus who healed my body. Every time I think about the mountain I climb, Lord, Lord, me. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Lord, Lord, me. And every time I think about the trouble I've had, Lord, Lord, me. That's why I stand up and tell the world everywhere I go. Touch your body right now, I know you will. He brought us from He can move all aches and pain. Amen. Nobody but Jesus, nobody but God that has brought us a mighty long ways. Oh, this has been so special to me. And I want to thank again my sisters and my brother, um, Lily Baskerville, Deaconess Gwen Faulkner, Evangelist Gloretta McNeil, Pastor Willie Yancey. Thank you for taking the time to sit down. I, I'm going to treasure this, the time with them and sharing this to everyone who listens to my podcast and on the radio station. God is good and I want to encourage all of us to continue to share our rich history with our children and our children's children because it's so important that they know and that we let them know that God brought us, amen, from a mighty long ways. I just shared this scripture in Proverbs, train, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's what my parents did. And I know that's what you're doing with your children. And we're all trying to do it with the grandchildren as well. Amen. God has been so good. He's been so faithful. And we don't wait for a calendar. We don't wait for the month of February. Amen to do our black history for. I know I've reached into March, but it doesn't matter because we live our history, amen? And it has reached us to know how good and how far God has brought us. I think I've said enough. Uh, thank you for tuning in today and spending time with me. And remember today and throughout every day to rejoice and be glad. Why? God loves you. <laughs>